Hello, this is Christy. Today we will look at another tool in Zara Designer Pro from our series of looking at all the functions of Zara Designer Pro. And today we are looking at the Contour tool. The Contour tool is very easy to use. You find it down here next to the uh, Zoom, the lens menu, and it opens this fly out here. And we have already covered the Bevel and the Blend tool. And this Contour tool is down here. So I'm going to select this one, but at the moment, I can't do anything with it because I don't have an object. So let's go and create an object. I'm going to use this star and just draw a star on my object here. It's a simple star. So what can you do with the contour tool? Well, if we select the contour tool, you notice that there are handles appearing around the object. These are different from the resize and rotation handles because they control the contour. So let's have a look. Let's drag one of these outside. You notice the object seems to increase in size, but actually what happens is it creates copies of this star on the outside. It's similar to the bevel tool in that it takes the outline of the object and applies some sort of an effect to it, but it allows you to control this effect quite a lot. So the first thing you can control is either the number of steps. So I have this tool at the top here, the, the, the toolbar that appears for every tool. So it changes. So now it says here that I can control the number of steps or the distance between the steps. I can't do both. So because I have the number of steps by default to five. Let's try and say eight. Notice there are more steps appearing now in the outline of my object. And of course, if I add like 15, it becomes even smoother. And until I cannot really see any uh, difference, it's just going to be a fade. But the objects are still there. So the outline becomes a repeated outline of the object and it changes color. Now, that is not much to look at yet, but look what you can do. You can actually change the, the way that this works. So if I make this um, sort of a blue, you notice the start color of my object has changed, but the outline has remained to red. So that means if I click on the inside object and make it maybe purple, and I click on the outside one and make it maybe green, you notice the transition will now go from that color to the outside one. If I click on this and make it yellow and click on the red one, the middle one and click red, you notice the color changes. Of course, all of this, these handles still work. So I'm going to zoom out a bit here. And also, if you instead want to change the distance between objects, so if you're, if you want to make like a specific size, at the moment, it says 0 0.3 centimeters between them. So if I put like a one centimeter, it doesn't do so many steps because I have now specified 1.51 and it doesn't really fit. So it's just created one step. 0 0.5 again creates more. So because it has more space, so it will it will try to obey the limits that I've established with my handle dragging when I first when I first made it. Now, another thing you can change is the blending mode here, the color effect. By default, you have fade, which means it's going to change from the inside color to the outside color in a fade way. If I click on rainbow, it's going to try and cycle through the colors of the rainbow. It may not be so obvious. You can also do a alt rainbow, which is a reverse reverted uh, rainbow. So you get uh, sort of some of the colors of the rainbow cycle through in there. It's easier if you switch to steps and maybe do seven steps. Now you can kind of see the colors of the rainbow in there. And um, depending on the color that you have started with, it may or may not work. So you just experiment with this. You can also, of course, change the size of the whole effect from this slider up here. OK, like so. And you can also change the type of inside. So let me show you the uh, inside of the objects. Let's change color so it's a little more obvious, easier to see. I'm going to just do five steps and 
make it larger. So notice that my inside color is orange and then the outside is kind of dark red. So if I change this out outer contour to an inner contour, the contour will actually go on the inside. So instead of going out, look what happens. The colors and the steps actually apply on the inside. I can use the handle to resize this and still get the same kind of effect, but now it's on the inside. And to go further, if you change this option here, inset path, it actually does the same, but starts from your small object and you drag towards the inside and it creates steps on the inside. So it's a little confusing because they seem to be doing the same function. But look at this, my object actually is a is a star is a perfect star on the outside but notice that by the time it gets to the inside it actually simplifies your shape and it becomes something else not a star whereas this one tries to keep the object from the start so now i've lost my um i've lost my star in the inside but then the outside it is a star so you can play with these options and one more thing i wanted to show look at these controls they control the uh sort of the shape of the outline that's created by the contour tool so by default it's, it's trying to keep the uh, pointy edges and corners but then this one makes them round and this one is kind of tapered or something and i really don't know what i ended up with anymore because my object has become some sort of a ship sized with a middle foxy shape anyway let me delete this and start again with a star here again my star is a simple five point and take the contour tool pull out words and look at this if i change the shape of the corners it creates different shapes like that finally one more thing if i choose more steps here let's do seven steps and you have these two arrows here the profiles now I may have, I have mentioned these profiles in my previous videos a lot. They help you determine the curve and the transition curve and the fall off for different effects that work in transition like this one. So if I select on this position profile, notice what happens right now. The distance between every one of the steps from the start to the end is the same. They're all equal and they look nice and they kind of fade out and it's cool. But if I change the profile, look what happens the if i go on the left towards the left here the middle part has bigger steps bigger the larger distances and then as it comes off to the edge it becomes smaller if i move the other way it starts with smaller distances and they become larger and larger so that gives you sort of like a depth effect then this other one let's put this one to the middle for a minute this other slider controls the sort of contrast between the end points so if you notice i'm going all the way to the left there is a concentration of steps at the at the beginning and then a concentration at the end the middle steps are quite large if i go the other way around the middle steps are small and the extremities retain larger steps so this is one way to control this and the other profile is called an attribute profile this one will control the color. So now if I pull this all the way here, there's more orange and then lighter hues for the most of the part of the transition. And then if I do the other way, I get mostly dark orange and then just a bit of light at the end. And finally, one more slider moves the transition, uh, how sudden the transition happens. So if I go all the way here, I get a big contrast with just dark and just light, not many in between shades. If I go in here, I get again sort of the middle middle uh, hue, mid, middle color is taking most of the space, and then the extremities, very light and very dark, are only just a little bit. So this again allows you to control uh, how your effect is applied. So you can you can create all these fancy effects with this tool. It doesn't really just work only for stars. You can actually do it for any object. So look at this object. It's a text object. Let's make it larger, let's make it green, and then use the contour tool on it to just create this fading effect, change the steps to maybe three, and there you go. You've created a very quick um, outline to your uh, object, and you can change the colors, you can change the curve, 
and just mess around with it and create all these interesting effects. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you. Maybe you found a little tool you didn't know about. And uh, if you enjoy my tutorials, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, share and like this video and stay tuned for more. If you look in the description, there's going to be a link to download a free trial of Zara Designer Pro if you don't have it and it's fully functional. You can save and export. There's no watermarks or anything. And also there's a playlist link to all of my Zara Designer Pro tutorials. Uh, go ahead and watch all of them. If you have any questions or uh, if you have any functions in Zara that you would like to see a tutorial about, please let me know in the comments and I will do one for you immediately. Thanks for watching. See you next time.